Following the Czech Republic, Slovakia and Germany, it's now Team Ireland and Team England's turn to go head-to-head -head in the thrilling reality TV show. Proudly carrying the Irish tricolour into the cage in Manchester will be Dennis Frimpong. He achieved a KO victory over Hassan Galezi and later defeated Bo Gavin by decision on the show to guarantee his place in the grand finale. In addition to his MMA success, he has also won the National Long Jump Championship in Ireland, but winning this fight will be the biggest leap he has ever taken in his career so far. Unlike Dennis, St. George Staines has yet to officially enter into a pro fight. After achieving wins over Matthew Elliott and Armand Herzeg, Staines will be the proud representative of Team England in the Octagon Challenge final. This lover of Lego and a self-confessed geek has a fantastic amateur record of 16 wins and just one loss. He believes he is set to deliver a technically advanced and near-perfect MMA display in Manchester. Will the menace be the organization's first Irish champ? Or will the highly touted talent deliver another dominant performance to claim the title on behalf of Team England? So, after what has been dubbed the best season ever of Octagon Challenge that Octagon have ever made, we will find out who will be the first, the inaugural champion. Will it be England? Will it be Ireland? And let's just talk about Dennis the Menace Brimbong. He was exactly that on the show, but from the very moment we talked to him about becoming part of it, he said, look, if I'm part of this, the fight will start before I step in the cage. I will start with mental warfare, anything I can do to give myself the slightest advantage. And you have to give him credit because he stayed true to that. He was the menace. He has become the Marmite of the show. People love him or they hate him, but he has earned this one this chance now to be the champion of Octagon Challenge. Yeah, Marmite's a great description of him, you know, like love him or hate him, but he, he brings that character, he brings that charisma, and he has wanted this fight for nigh on two years, Brian, calling the name of George Staines, which no one else was doing. So for him, he's been envisioning this for a very, very long time, and he brings the intensity you can see of that character, and he needs to deliver here as the menace. Frimpong inside the cage. Now we are set and ready to welcome from England, St. George Stays. And here he comes. This young man, listen to the support, listen to the fans that he brings. As an amateur, he reached the heady heights. IMAF champion, European champion. And on the show, he was without a doubt the one that most of the fighters were talking about with skill set as the most complete, the most accomplished mixed martial artist. And tonight, he wants to crown himself as the champion. Him and Dennis have many words backwards and forwards. Him and Dennis have got a score to settle, but the beauty of this sport is when that cage door closes, Luke, that score, we will find out who will be the winner. Now we look at their tail of the tape. Five years, the younger is St. George Staines. Dennis Frimpong will have the height and the reach advantage. The tip sport odds in favor of George Staines. Here we go. Here we go. Excited for this one. Back and forth. George wasn't happy with a number of things Dennis said. He said he will make him pay for it. He will make him pay. And listen, this has not been a camp where he's had to spend it in the house with the menace in his ear. He's been back at his tea over there in Hull, and he feels prepared, and he looks relaxed and ready for this. Let's get this one underway. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for the main card. And even more, this is the final Octagon Challenge, UK versus Ireland. Five, five minutes round. The referee in charge is Sian Wobornik. Let me introduce you both fighters. I will start in a blue corner. He's 28 years old, stands 188 centimeter tall, weighting 70.3 kilo. Represents Manchester top team, Day Walkers Academy MMA and Dublin Combat. Coaches in his corner are Carl Prince, Aaron Wilkinson, Cody Mahan, and the coach from Octagon Challenge, Paddy Hollyan. He has a professional record of two fights. 
one win and one loss. Fighting out of Ireland, Dennis Dabinis Frimpong. Across the cage in the red corner, 23 years old, stands 185 centimeter tall, weighting 70.3 kilos, represent his squad hull, and the coaches in his corner are Limeken, Sue Graham, and Brad Pickett. This is his first professional fight, European IMAF champion, fighting out of United Kingdom. George Saint Saints! Let's go guys. You know everything what you need to know. Go for win and uh, go for title. Do it hard but always clean and fair. If you want to touch gloves, no touch of gloves there from Dennis the Man is free from. No surprise from me. The atmosphere electric, the tip spot odds in favour of St. George Staines. England versus Ireland, the culmination of the series Octagon Challenge right here now in Octagon 48 in the AO Arena in Manchester. The Fr entire series comes down to this 25 minutes, Brian. And Frimpong with a big smile on his face as we get this one on the go. Listen, George Staines said i'm gonna make him pay for all those words this is where he's had most of his success in his career looking for the takedowns but frimpong he's so awkward he is so good even on his back right his guard is elite this is what makes the fight is all about here this moment he gets him down early this is what he's going to look for try and get to the back of frimpong frimpong is long awkward oh, and the great down guard, again. good elbows from the bottom and dangerous from everywhere so Going to be interesting to see how he deals with it, those long limbs. Oh, look, and this is a five-round fight as well. This is a title fight, five five-minute rounds to settle this. But top pressure coming early from the brown belt, George Staines. Yeah, great hips, forward hips from Staines. He's to watch, oh, watch the triangle. Watch the triangle and watch the armbar. Those long limbs We saw Frimpong. We saw in the show Staines get out of two really deep armbars from Matty Elliott. That was his first fight in the house. Then he finished Armand Herzeg. Dennis Frimpong, he beat Hassan Galezi, then also Bo Gavin in the fight of the season. Well, ferocious start to this one. Oh, these up kicks, the pace, Luke. The pace of this fight is unreal. It's only been a minute. See how they can hold this up. But Staines is on him, sticking to him like glue, good hips. They like said the Jiu-Jitsu Brown belt showing his skills here. And if you can keep that pace and keep that forward motion and stay on Frimpong, nice teeth there from the bottom. Oh. Big shots as well from Staines. Look at this, and now firing that down the middle. Big work here, but Staines has got to be aware of that guard. Frimpong has got submissions from everywhere. His last fight is actually a banana split finish there in 31 seconds, Luke. It's not just a crazy, strange body type, but also has the elite skills to make it count if he can make it work. But also being tall in this position, that can work against you if you stay in the guard. It's very difficult to get your foot on the hip because of those long limbs, and that's what he's struggling with. Uses the knee, though, the knee shield, to try and change that. Looking for these up kicks, but look. Stane's just avoiding everything and landing big shots from the top. But look at the pressure, Luke. The, uh, the pressure, it is relentless from George. Another shot, find his way through there. He said he wants to make him, uh, Dennis pay for the words he said about his grand, about his father, about his family. Well, you can definitely feel that in this fight, the, the, the urgency to make a statement from both men. Frimpong not smiling at the moment, had a big grin on his face the entirety of the introductions. But now only halfway through this first round, has not managed to get back to his feet or really threatened too much from the bottom. Oh, again from the inside, George finding a way to get some shots off. Stain's making these tiny little adjustments that really matter. A BJJ brown belt, Luke. A BJJ brown belt at his age. Yeah, just one step ahead of Frimpong at the moment. Controlling that, even just the little things with his feet, controlling, going to the body. Oh, this is an absolute. And even there, Frimpong tried to get up but couldn't because the forward pressure is consistent from Staines. Oh, he works his way through. He likes to work from this spot as well. But Dennis Frimpong, you've got to be aware of that guard consistently. He can throw submissions up. And Carl Prince was talking to me about him in the gym. He says he works as hard as anyone. You look at all the elite fighters Wait, over nice there. Up kick there. 
Oh, more shots coming in. Well, he's going to need that hard work and that cardio in this fight. Oh, he steps across, slides into half guard. A great top pressure here. Consistent from Staines. It's going to be interesting to see how, he, how his gas tank holds up as well because he's been, you know, full speed since we started. Four minutes in almost now. And it's something you've got to manage because Dennis Brimbong has never been knocked out. He has got one hell of a chin. And George Staines trying to put it to the test, but you, you, you have to balance that with being efficient as well, right? Especially over a five-round fight that neither of these would have felt before. Brimpong's face, though, now wearing the shots of Staines, the marks. And he just can't seem to get up from this position. And it was quite easy for Staines oh. to get in there. So we could see it in further rounds as well. I haven't seen him attack so much from the guard, apart from these up kicks. I've not seen him look so much for arm balls or anything yet. Staines trying to shirk that leg off. Good control of the leg there to, to stop him going under him. So much pressure. Really nice up kick again. Big, big shots. It's the first time that George Staines has taken a breath. Now he's in the guard. For a moment, he's not throwing barrages of punches down. Great opener for him. A strong, strong round there. And right in the corner, right in the front of the corner there for... Uh... Here we go, round number two of five. Oh, nice straight left there from Frimpong. Staines trying to work his way in. Oh, big pressure again. Nice knee coming from Frimpong as well. But he almost looks a little bit tired, a little bit wary from the battering he took in that first round and getting taken down early again in this second. And Staines has worked his way inside. And within 20 seconds, he's got this to the mat again, trying to work his way around to the back. Yeah, really searching for the back now. Getting that, trying to get that right knee further forward. In the corner, you got Liam Can there, an exquisite BJJ black belt over there from the Scramble Gym. Brad Pickett as well, and Stu Graham in the corner of St. George Staines. And this is the difference, right? On the first round, he was in front of the, the, the Irish corner, I'll call it, Manchester top team and Paddy Houlihan. But now George Staines just got him right in front of his corner where he can take these instructions as well. Frimpong doing a good job to evade, though, and didn't give up the back, but he's now getting squashed and controlled from Staines, smothered, maybe a better word. But he seemed tired in, in the opener. He landed a couple of good shots, good left hand, nice knee came out of nowhere and landed. But if he can't get out of this position, he didn't in the first round, he didn't even really attempt to stand up. So we're just going to see this over and over again because Staines is able to get in there and able to keep him there. And this is what Staines wants to do, and I don't think Staines is going to get tired doing this. And this is the top pressure. I, I was lucky enough to call George Staines' fights through the IMAFs where he claimed that European title against some real heavy, heavy competition from all around the world. And this was his game, the pressure, the cage control. And for such a young man, and again, when you look at the, what people's perceptions of mixed martial artists are, the, the stereotype they think he is, the, apart from the tattoo on his back, he's the exact opposite, right? He loves Star Wars, he loves Lego. He's a, a, a big, you know, fan of just watching cartoons and chilling out watching Will Ferrell movies. But on top of that, he's an absolute beast in the cage. For some reason, you can see the corner and Fring Pong and the referee having a bit of an argument. I'm not sure what it's about, uh, but very Fring vocal Pong, there. Was it with the... English corner or the other corner, the other side? No, the English corner. Brad was 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 talking to Jan. They were going back and forth. I don't oh, know wow. what it was quite about. Never seen that from, from, from Brad. But, you know, emotions get run high when you're in the corner of a, of a cage fight. Well, listen, also, Brad Pickett took umbrage a couple of times to some of the, uh, the post-win celebrations of Dennis Frimpong. But look at the output, 134 to 14. 14. Absolute mauling so far oh, from big George shots. Staines. This is what he promised. This is what he said he would deliver. He would make him pay for everything that he's done and everything that he said. And so far, he's doing exactly that. Big breaths from Frimpong. And we're only two rounds in, not even, not even to the end of the second round. You've got to ask the question, though. This is, this is a, a hell of a pace. We're looking at what Dennis Frimpong can, can take. But what pace can Janet George Staines keep? What can he do? This is ridiculous, the output he's got. But he's not having to fight back against any attempts of stand-up, sweeps. Frimpong is just sitting Great there point. and yeah. not getting hit. So he's just calm, relaxing. Duk, duk, duk. It's very easy to stay 
yeah, you know, in your own rhythm. It's when you're the one being pushed and you're out, you're outside your own, your own comfort zone. At the moment, he's completely in the comfort zone. He's picking when he pushes, he's picking when he rests. So I, I feel like if Staines wanted to, he could just take a breather here. He doesn't even need to really work. Because French Pong is not, he doesn't have any urgency to stand back up. Maybe he's playing a long game. Like I said, maybe on purpose, he's gonna calm, stay relaxed here and try and come in in the, in the later rounds if he can get there. But, uh, you know, like a rope dope kind of style, but it doesn't seem like that. It just seems like he doesn't have the answers to the questions oh. that the Staines is, is po poising here. Look at this dirty boxing from the ground from George Staines. Short uppercuts, lovely little hooks. <laughs> Frimpong attempted to get up then. That's the first time he's attempted to get up. That's the first time he's shown any, you know, urgency to get back to his feet, and it was stuffed instantly. Big shots landed there. I'm going to ask the question, how are you scoring these rounds? I, I, know, mean, I, I know which way you're scoring them, but, you know, I wouldn't the say any of these are 10-8s yeah, just yet, because 10-8 normally means that the fight was almost finished. That's yeah. normally what you see. You seem like a stumble, a knockdown. Or, this is just domination at the moment, but I don't think Frimpong's in that much trouble. <laughs> George Staines and then his Frimpong both talking to me here. Little message for me. And they're talking to each other as well. And that's entertaining and that's fun, but if I was Frimpong, I'd be more worried about standing back to my feet and getting away from Staines at the moment. I, I'm, all, I'm a man who loves showmanship, but not when you forget the fundamentals of why we're here. Look how fresh Staines looks, standing over his man, little short jab. There you go. Oh, Frimpong coming forward, but that's opened the opportunity. Lovely reversal from Frimpong. Might get the sweep, though. Manages to get on top. Best thing we've seen from Frimpong in the grappling department. Oh. See if he can break away now. This is positive for him. Oh, and again, can affect, the, can affect the confidence of Staines, but Staines ducks in, looking for the guillotine. Oh, he's working for the neck. Might be a little mistake looking for the sweep here, but this is it. You can see Frimbong trying to make something different happen. But now stuck in the middle of the cage, different to what we've seen in the first two rounds. Can you utilize his guard a little bit more? It's very difficult to use your guard as a tall guy pinned up against the fence. So in the middle of the cage, he is actually more dangerous. It's harder to stand back up, but Frimbong didn't try and stand up anyway. So it might actually do him better being here. I would hate to be in the middle of the cage. I always want to be by the fence because I'm trying to get back to my feet. But Frimpong, like the, the active guard that he does have, we oh. haven't seen it yet, but he does have, he could utilize that now. And he's got a very tough guard to pass as well, so he needs to try something though. Oh, he's yeah, George stays, happy here. yeah, really comfortable in this spot. Try, wrapping up that left arm, try, he, he's trying to make things happen, Frimpong now. He's definitely a lot more active off his back than we saw in the first two rounds. Switching his hips, trying to make something happen. Staines is very aware, though, keeping himself central. Great hip position from him. Needs to be careful of this, this setup. That left arm trying to open up some space to get that knee through. Very comfortable here is George Staines. And the pace of Staines coming into round number three. George on his back here. Still maintaining the guard. Yeah, opening up the guard now, but still not attacking him too much or trying to get on his side. The Frimpong corner almost silenced as well, quiet, but I think they know Frimpong maybe just won't listen. You know, he's a, he's a character, and, and sometimes that comes with negatives as well. If he believes in himself so much, and the way he talks and his actions that he makes, he needs, he needs to show it here. He needs to get a foot on the hip. He needs to get back to his feet. He cannot accept this bottom position. Accepting this bottom position does him no good. One of the things he talked about was manifesting this fight. He's got DMs from, like, two years ago where he's asking to fight George Staines, chasing him down, and he said, look, this was meant to be. But right now, George Staines, a dominant first and second round, more of the same in round number three. But hasn't looked to finish uh, Frimpong at all. Frimpong looks very, you know, unfazed in here, getting hurt, getting here, losing, definitely. But Staines hasn't come close to finishing the fight yet, which means he's always still in there because every opener of every round, he has that opportunity because he's so unorthodox and dangerous on the feet. But again, not even trying to get up here on the fence. He's got loads of space to stand here. And Staines almost letting him because I think he wants something to happen. Knee to the body nice there from Staines, switching it up. Oh, just keeping the pressure, the output. Now, gotta watch for those up kicks. 
Listen to the support George Staines has on their feet. Everybody who's come over from Hull. One minute, 30 seconds left of round number three. That will see us move into the championship round. Should we see this time out? Puts on the hip, finally. Now oh. we need to do a nice up kick lands, or half lands, can try and get a triangle. But he doesn't even attempt to get that, to lock it up over the head. And listen, it ain't pretty by George Staines, right? But it's working. Oh, it's super effective. And these are horrible, grueling fights to be in. To be in. You know, for Frimpong on the bottom, okay, he's not... He, he's just getting tapped, tap, tap, tap. We can't even get tapped 200 times. It's not a lot of fun. Just breaking him down piece by piece, his stains. Oh, up kicks again. But that's the only danger he's got is that up kick. He, 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 even when the space, when Staines gives him the space, he doesn't even try and get back to his feet, which is where he, in my opinion, in the small moments we've seen it, he seemed to have the advantage on the feet. He's, he's landed some awkward and weird shots, a good left knee in that second round. And Staines obviously feels uncomfortable there, which is why he, he shoots and gets the takedown so quickly. 25 seconds now left in round number three. Some blood coming from somewhere. I think it might be coming from George. Those awkward elbows coming from the bottom. Yeah, he's got that frame which just slices, right? Everything is bony with that. Dennis Frimpong uses that to great effect. Can't quite see. I think it's the nose, actually, of George. Looks like we'll see this round out. Once again, George stands on top. And for the first time in both these guys' careers. Let's go. Championship rounds here at the Octagon Challenge, England versus Ireland finale. And the, the, the lanky limbs of Frimpong needs to stay away from that oh, fence. Oh, the right hand catches him again. He's gone on the neck again. He's committed to that, but a mistake, you've got to say that. Look, you've got your head in your hands there. I hate when I see that. I hate when you see a guillotine attempt on a guy that is a high-level grappler when you're you're losing and you're down and you end up on your back. And that, you're covered in sweat. Yeah, that, 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 that was a, a big mistake. And that's, uh, you know, low fighter IQ for me, trying to attempt a guillotine. Unless he really felt like he had it, which obviously he didn't. Um, yeah, I feel, because we, once you hit the mat, you've not been able to do anything. So you should be avoiding that like the plague. So you should be framing, you should be pushing away, you should be avoiding any sort of, you know, grappling experience with this guy. You should be trying to get that distance, land elbows, big knees, all those sort of things. Now we're in here, if you're going to try guillotines, then you need to try get-ups, you need to try triangles, you need to try and set something up. You know, nice elbow on the inside on the bottom, but we've seen this now for 15 minutes, and Frimpong has not come out on top. That is exactly the situation. Groundhog Day, round one, round two, round three, now round four. Like I said, for Frimpong, the, the, the limbs that he has, they're being used against him here. When you're pinned up against the fence, old school, T.O.R.T. style, head buried into the chest and battering you from the top, if you stay in the guard position with your legs crossed like he is, you've got nothing. You cannot win. It is impossible. You cannot submit someone from there. It's so difficult. You need oh, the eye. Look at the eye of Frimpong. There's a big cut. The, I just saw his head pop up. It must have been from one of those short shots, but the left eye of Dennis Frimpong is leaking. You can see he's uncomfortable with that. I'm not sure exactly what got through, but now he's bleeding. Oh, maybe looking for this front. Oh, he's going to get it. Frimpong taps. Oh, my goodness. St. George stays. He gets the finish. That is it, the redemption he called for. But on top of that, he has earned himself a place in history. He is the first ever Octagon Challenge England versus Ireland champion. And he has done it in some style, Luke Barnett. And the crowd respond here on their feet. We've got someone over there with his top off going crazy. So some crazy fans here in the UK for George Stain. But an absolutely incredible performance. To be honest, pretty much flawless, flawless oh. four rounds. Oh, the four round. As you see, uh, Carl Prince trying to pants around digging there in the cage in front of us. But, you know.
You know, quite a competition. Brick you know, I was a bit hard oh, for him in the commentary. He's listen. a tough individual. What? He's a character. He's interesting. But I just felt like I wanted more from him. What he did on the show, what, he, listen, he, he made the show. The antics, the, uh, the talk, the trash talk, the fights, he was phenomenal. But the one everybody was talking about as far as talent that could go all the way was St. George State. And look at what he's just done. This is the finish. I don't see where the cut came from, but it caused Brim from problems and it opened up this opportunity, Luke. Yeah, just uh, gets hold of the neck. And it's an army and guillotine, I believe, at the moment. I can't quite see. Or maybe he goes to the, he the front headlock. Yeah, I guess that there's no army in as well. And once he gets this, he just squeezes. And it's more just an opportunity and maybe the gas of Brimpong as well. He just managed to get that chin strap and opened up the neck. And once he got a good grasp of it, he finished him off. But a flawless performance. As you see George Staines jump into the crowd now, making a bit of a ruckus. It's not on camera, but an absolutely mental finish for him. And like I said, at this young age, a brown belt in jiu-jitsu, and now the Octagon Challenge champion, going four rounds or finishing the fight in the fourth round. You see, the emotion overtakes him there. And we see 243 shots with the output. Only 37 significant, but those 200 plus shots all landed. They're all little ground and pound, breaking him down bit by bit. And the output of George Staines, incredible stuff as he makes his way back into the cage. And to crown him, the Octagon Challenge champion, the first one here for the UK and Ireland. We just await one man as he makes his way to the cage, and that man is Andre Novotny. Pavel Neruda already in the cage, carrying that title. And this is a moment in history here for Octagon MMA. And you see Shemrock in there now embracing, obviously, Shem working with the Irish team. So just showing respects. And Andre now in the cage. And Giogi and Monkey, our mascot on the cage wall as well. As we see this one announced, I'll hand it over to the one, the only, Andre Novotny. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes and two seconds in the third round by Guillotine, the new Octagon Challenge champion, George St. Staines! St. George Staines, remember the name. Remember the name. Listen, there was so much from this whole series, the back, the forth, the stuff that happened outside the cage, but the performance you just put on in it to earn yourself self a place in Octagon history was nothing short of spectacular. Just sum up being part of the show and then getting that belt around your waist, St. George Staines. So the show was amazing. Like, Everyone who's watched it, I'm sure everyone in has watched it. It was just phenomenal to be a part of. Like when I got the call, it was so hard to turn down. Like once a lifetime opportunity, way better than the ultimate fighter. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just phenomenal to get his belt. Do you know what I mean? It, especially his last like eight weeks. Obviously I've been training since I got home, but this last like eight weeks, he's been hard. I've been traveling all over. <laughs> Uh, sorry, Brian. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but to win this belt, as you know, it shows how much hard work and dedication I've put in. So, um, with Brad in London, GP top team, and next generation, I got a lot of my rounds down this camp there. So, even like I did rounds with Shem, you know, uh, Paddy, uh, Adam Cullen, Luke Riley, all these guys, top, top, as you know, guys, and they, they pushed me forward to be better because these are all performing on such, such, such spectacular levels that I want to try and match these guys, do you know what I mean? So, I can put up a performance on like that. But, you know, for my debut, ready to do five rounds, you know, 
name me another debut pro that's done or was going to fight five rounds. Like, can you name me one, Brian? Not right now. Five rounds and a belt round your waist. Listen, let, let, let's talk about your opponent as well, because Dennis Frimpong, I mean, so much outside. That, listen, you've got to give respect to this guy, what he did on the show, the performances. And, I mean, does he have your respect now after you fought him in the cage? Yeah, caught he did it anyway, do you know. He beat two of my teammates in Hassan and Bo. So I had respect for him anyway, do you know what I mean? Any, you got to have respect for anyone that jumps in the cage, so all respect to Dennis, do you know what I mean? But all that shit talking here was just bouncing off my head, do you know what I mean? Didn't mean a single thing to me, so that's what you're going to expect watching me every time to dominate a fight like that. Three 10-8s and there's submission in the fourth. Don't get much better than that. It's spectacular. Look at your crowd. Look at your dad there as well, eh? What a moment this is for you. St. George Staines, give it up one more time. You are the Octagon Challenge champion, England versus Ireland. Dennis Frimpong. Listen, man, hold your head up high. I have got to say this. As much as those boos are ringing here, there is so much love for you, so much respect for you for everything you did on this show, all right? You were phenomenal. The challenge series would not have been what it was if you were not in it and you did not be the person you were inside the cage and outside it. I know lots was said. I know you're feeling many emotions, but you've got to give respect to George Staines and we are giving respect to you, Dennis Frimpong. I promise you that. Yeah, George is good, man. He's good. He's better than I thought he'd be. Uh, I've had a lot of shit happen to me this week. I didn't want to, I don't want to make any excuses. He was just a better man in the night, but uh, yeah. It is what it is, like, uh, I'll be back. I'm gonna get back to the drawing board, keep training, and um, yeah, I'll be back. Hopefully I'll turn those booze in the chairs one day. I can see it, I can believe it. Listen, you have been phenomenal. It has been an honor to have you as part of the series, to see you as a character inside the show. 100%, nothing but pride, nothing but love for you. Give it up one more time, Dennis Frimpong. to be able to draw emotion out of a crowd, emotion. At the end of the day, that is what fighting is about. It's about being an entertainer and, and, and Frimpong brings out emotion in people. The amount of booze that he received then and the amount of hatred, but it can be good, it can be bad, but people will watch him. He'll be back, he's a character. I mean, the night belongs to George Staines becoming the, the Octagon Challenge champion. You see him there with his team, you know, how fantastic he's done uh, in that competition, but the night, tonight, crowning our first UK Octagon Challenge champion after our first series, it was one hell of a, an emotional battle back and forth. And, and, you know, there's two sides to every coin, and Fringpong did his part. What a character, and bringing out the, the emotion from the crowd, the hatred from the crowd was Dennis Fringpong. The year 2024 is coming, and so is Octagon MMA. Our UK and Irish adventure continues with four more events on British soil coming next year. The most spectacular MMA show in Europe has to be experienced to be believed. Bringing you the best talent from the UK and Ireland as well as stars from Europe and beyond. Atmosphere, emotions and adrenaline all in one place. This is where Shamrock shines. First stop is Newcastle on January 27th and then Birmingham. Tickets on sale from November 20th.